Melee is so, so sick, awesome. dude. Who made this game? Just get rid of it! <laughs> fucking trash. The awesome sauce video, Melee's glitches that aren't really glitches. There we go. When it comes to unintentional mechanics, Melee is pretty infamous. Sometimes, though, I see very intentional mechanics dismissed as something they're not. Take, for instance, a staple of competitive melee play, L canceling. The act of pressing L, R, or Z shortly before landing with an aerial. Timing this correctly doubles the speed of an aerial's landing animation, allowing for a subsequent action to be performed more quickly afterward. If the editing on this is the leading factors amazing. to competitive melee's breakneck speeds. While L canceling itself isn't mentioned in any official capacity, such as the manual, its equivalent tech from Smash 64, known to most as Z canceling, was mentioned on the official Smash Bros. website as a mechanic under the name of Smooth Landing. Fun fact, I learned how to L cancel with Smash 64. Fun fact. And because of these two mechanics' similarities, we can reasonably assume that while undeniably hidden from the player, L canceling is intentional. Also, in several interviews, Sakurai himself mentions the mechanic as something he specifically added and it was introduced to the world, and by that same token, deliberately removed for Brawl's release, in an effort to tighten the gap between casual and hardcore players. But there exist some mechanics so hidden, so obscure, oh, no. so weird, Oh. that not even many of Melee's most seasoned players know of their existence. Like this one. <laughs> Did you notice it? Come on. You this is so Fox cursed. not being sent as far as usual? Amateur. This is V canceling. Oh my god. Very inspired. This Discovered is the Wizard in 2015, V-Canceling is a mechanic that, in the game's code, multiplies knockback velocity by 0.95, or in layman's terms, reduces it by 5%. V-Canceling is somewhat similar to teching. Both require a fully depressed shoulder button to perform, both have a 40 frame lockout window, and both are actions that can be performed to aid in surviving otherwise deadly attacks, or she at lives! least escaping a combo. Where they differ, however, is in their function. Teching involves a player more quickly recovering from a damage or tumble state by colliding with a solid object. V canceling is so is the sick, dude. Requiring the player performing it to be airborne, but not in hit stun, or floating, or doing a special move, or attack. You can imagine why this took 15 years to discover. It's so specific. On top of having much more rare use cases, V canceling is also much, much more difficult to perform. A three frame window compared to a Tex whopping 20. But it's not so difficult Tiny as window. to be undoable. In fact, if you play melee, there's a pretty good chance you've done it on accident at least a few times. When trying to Tex shortly before a follow-up connects, or when trying to use an air dodge, especially. That's Funnily so enough, funny. There's at least one known instance of someone accidentally V canceling an otherwise game ending kill move, surviving, then winning that game. Was it? There might even be a quality breakdown of what I'm talking about somewhere. My man Walt. Okay, guys, this isn't my video. Where is the jazz Walt? music? Thank you. The crossover of the century. How many times did we rehearse this? All right, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Turn down for Walt here. Well, Walt. And this episode of Frame Data, uh, I mean, Melee's Glitches That Aren't Really Glitches by Awesome Sauce. We're going to take a look at Axe's life saving B cancel versus S Fat, which won him the set at Smash Summit 5. Let's check it out. That was literally. S Fat drifts towards the left platform of Pokemon Stadium causing Axe's up tilt attempt to miss. S-Fat wavelands backwards on the left platform as Axe's up tilt animation completes, and then attempts to short hop Nair towards center, to which Axe simply walks backwards to avoid. He turns around and attempts to grab S-Fat on landing, but S-Fat gets a spot dodge out. This missed grab should, in theory, spell the end of game two for Axe. 
Marth Grab has a total of 29 frames, and Fox Spot Dodge has a total of 29 so frames, which maths out to 3 frames of strict advantage for SFAT. In that advantage window, Fox can shine, which hits on frame 1, or jab, which hits on frame 2. The spacing is a bit off for a shine, so SFAT opts for the jab, and after Axe SDIs the hit upwards, he's Look. unable to true CC the following up smash, which should guarantee a kill on Marth at this percentage. It stage should position. kill. But here's where things get interesting. Like our favorite cheese wheel taught us just a moment ago, Axe accidentally inputted a V cancel with the expectation that he would be getting a ground tech just frames later. This allows Axe to survive the otherwise game ending hit, and after almost a full minute of high percent tense gameplay, Axe brings it all the way back to steal game two. To win, dude. Dude, Zach's movement stopped. Like he it's it's just nuts. His hands could... must be drenched in water yes, right now. Yes. It's sweat. One of the most ironic things I found when I reviewed this sequence was that SFAT could have also had a life-saving V cancel moment of his own in the beginning of this sequence. With SFAT airborne and at 129%, a clean up tilt for 13% would be a guaranteed kill at every trajectory DI angle. However, a V cancel plus hard DI in the direction of the hit actually saves SFAT here. It's possible that this isn't even a consideration on SFAT's side, though, not only because so many people V cancel completely. You know, people say it's not but that deep, also bro. Because SFAT shine stalls it is that deep. from the tumble animation, which removes the possibility of a ground tech altogether. Anyway, if you like what you saw, consider <laughs> subscribing to me. Turn down for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Thanks, Walt. Patreon. Now, why this mechanic was left Such so a good video, especially relative to the tiny benefit you get from performing it while also being entirely hidden is anyone's guess. A popular theory is that it's a probably unfinished mechanic that was being tested and then was forgotten about before it could be removed for release, much like another oddity I've covered. However, unlike the extender, which the extender. was removed in PAL, V cancelling exists on all versions of Melee. And if you ever feel like practicing V cancelling, or you just want to know when you do it on accident, there's a slippy compatible gecko code that plays a sound when a successful one is performed. <laughs> I need that dude. But I'm not sure if it applies to Puff at all. Phantom hits. Moves that connect, hey. but only do half their normal damage. And there it is. not really much else. Like L canceling, sometimes I see people say they're a glitch. Oh, a oh, rest. Rest. Oh, oh my god. Bro, that was on Zane at Smash Con. Oh, a oh, rest. Oh, oh my god. I just saw Zane shaking his fist like yeah, dude. Ah they're my not. god. However, unlike L canceling, which was mentioned officially in regard to its predecessor, but not with Melee proper, think of Phantom Hits as the opposite. The mechanic debuted in Melee, but wasn't officially named until Brawl, where they were officially dubbed Glancing Blows, and have since kept that name for Smash 4 and Ultimate. There are a couple other misconceptions Wait, did Brawl Phantom have Phantom? Hits that I wanted to touch on as well. One, that phantom hits occur when a hitbox is tangential to a character's hurtbox. Tangential meaning touching but not overlapping. And two, that phantom hits occur when attacks are a pixel off. <laughs> <laughs> While both are useful, convenient shorthand no. explanations for a relatively common occurrence in melee, and understandably repeated among melee players, they're not quite accurate. And for the sake of content, here are the real mechanics behind the mechanic. Yeah. First, in most 3D games, there's really no such thing as a pixel when referring to a concrete amount of distance. For example, here you can say Fox is a couple hundred pixels away from Falco or something. But if we zoom out or zoom in, which Melee's camera often does, Wait. the distance between the two in pixels changes. We can also change the resolution of the game itself or of our device displaying the game and have a different number of pixels separating the two. Instead of pixels, Melee's character positions are represented in nameless in-game units, independent of any camera movements or resolution changes. MDUs? Phantom hits occur when a hitbox overlaps a hurtbox within 0.01 of these units. This means a truly tangential <laughs> touch of hidden hurtboxes Who could made this game? cause a phantom hit, because of the actual overlap required for a phantom hit to occur. Unfortunately, due to Melee's hitbox and hurtbox visualizations not being perfectly elliptical, 
which they are in actuality, it looks like phantom hits aren't overlapping when we try to see this tiny overlap in action. <laughs> but simulating more perfectly round hitboxes, we can get a rough idea of how What the are. fuck? Or we can edit some data within the game and change the maximum overlap value of a phantom hit from 0.01 .01 to something way bigger, like 5 giving phantom hits much more leniency. <laughs> Doing this, the overlap becomes clearly visible without any need for my rough Five. <laughs> collision bubbles. Holy shit. And if you're curious what happens if we set this value to zero, it effectively removes phantoms from the game. And uh, shit, I'm down for that. Wow. Just get rid of it! <laughs> Why we- Oh, dude. Phantoms, I know phantoms are hype in a lot of ways. But it- it. Big thanks to Benno. It's Cooper in the C, game to, like, Izzy, mock you. Watcher, Garlic, GR Smash. It's in the game to, like, tell you, Hey, you were so close. You were so close to hitting that rest. To beating Zane. But you're fucking trash.